Having trouble winning games in college football 25? Whether you can't score on offense, or can't stop anybody on defense, this is the video for you. So if you guys want to see 15 tips, tricks, and cheats on how to get better at College Football 25, stick around after the intro. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys 15 tips, tricks, and cheats to be better on offense and defense in College Football 25. But before I do, if you guys want to see more tip videos like this, I put them out throughout the year. Please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. And if you want more help, you can download any of my eBooks instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment. For my first tip, I'm going to go over the new kick meter. If you're having trouble with the new kick meter, whether on kickoffs or on extra points and field goals, it might be because you're filling the kick meter too much. As filling the kick meter into the red can often have disastrous results and you can see that it'll cause the kick meter to sway back and forth letting you know that you're going to have an inaccurate kick. In college football 25 it's counterintuitive as you typically want to fill the kick meter all the way so you get the max kick power but in this game you can't go too far or there'll be negative consequences things like inaccurate kicks or even the kick meter starting over and coming back with less power. So for more accurate kicks when kicking field goals and extra points, just make sure to not let the field goal meter fill up the entire way, and you'll significantly reduce your chances of inaccurate kicks, as extra points especially need little to no kick power at all to go through from such a short distance. And if you simply don't prefer this style of kick meter, you can always go into your game settings at any point in time and change the kick meter style by scrolling down to the kicking section for control scheme and change it from tap and hold to tap and tap. And this will change the kick meter to the old-fashioned Madden function where you have to tap the button twice, once for accuracy and once for power, making it much easier to time for more reliable kicks. Next, I'm going to go over some tips on offense. If you're having accuracy issues with the new revamped passing system, you may want to switch over to placement or placement and accuracy, which you can access once again by going into your settings, game options, and passing mechanics by changing your passing type as this will actually give you an area that pops up on the field to allow you to see exactly where you're putting the ball before you throw it. Unlike revamp passing, which is basically just classic passing with a throw power meter. So if you want more control and more accuracy in your throws, try placement or placement and accuracy. Next up, if you're taking a lot of sacks, if you're having a lot of trouble in pass protection and getting a lot of pressure, you really need to get used to the new pass protection calls, as they're very effective at picking up just about any single blitz in the game, as long as you make the right adjustments for the blitz. The being at the pass probe mechanics, all you have to do is hold in the LB or the L1 button, and you can see how it brings up a full list of about nine different things you can do when it comes to pass protection. The most important, in my opinion, is the full slide and half slide functions, as you can mess with these and until you basically figure out exactly how to pick up any blitz that your opponent shows you. Now, if your opponent is sending aggressive man zero blitzes where they're blitzing more defenders than you have blockers, there's a tip for that as well. In NCAA, the tight ends don't have the ability to do check and release routes. They only have the ability to do pass blocks, which can help with the pass protection. But if you watch the defenders that were supposed to man to them, they essentially turn into deep defenders, making it much harder to pass downfield, making it better to essentially have tight ends running routes but when it comes to the running back, they have an additional pass protection option called a block and release. And you can use this function to put any running back at any time into a block and release pattern that is designed to stay home initially to pick up any oncoming blitzers, but also will release into the flats at any point in time. But if the blitzer doesn't come in fast enough, the running back can often miss him and go out on his route. But you also have the ability to control this simply by putting them on a block and release and then changing your pass protection with the full slide or half slide functions. And this will put them on a permanent pass block throughout the entire play. As combining these two functions will make him stay in as a pass blocker throughout the entire play because you told him to pick up the blitz. And even though this function will override the ability for the running back to go out on a route, making them pass block the entire time, it will still have the added function of holding the man coverage defender that was assigned to him the entire time throughout the play. As you can see right here, he just sits at the line of scrimmage and watches the ball fly right over his head to the tight end right behind him. 
And this is also something that you can do with any check and release route. Any route that's in a light blue like this one here, which is basically a check and release swing to the right, you can put your player on a half slide once again, and it will take away his ability to go out on a route, making him a pass blocker the entire play, giving you much better options to pass the ball down the field because there's less coverage defenders. Next up, one of the worst things you can do in this game is to throw an interception or take a big sack when trying to make a play that's just not there. As it's often better to just throw the ball away out of bounds. And to do that, it's a very simple function of simply pushing in the right stick. Just make sure that you don't do this when inside the pocket or inside the tackle box because it will result in a penalty. So if you're in a situation where it just doesn't look like there's anybody open, try to roll out of the pocket as best as you can and push in the right stick to safely throw the ball out of bounds to get to the next play. Next up, I'm going to go over the most important catch function that you can do. As College Football 25 really seems like it has more knockouts than any football game that we've seen so far, as knockouts happen on just about every other play. So if you want to limit the opportunity for knockouts, whenever your receiver is getting close to a defender, just make sure that you use the safe catch function, which is tapping the A or X button, whether on Xbox or PlayStation, and the receiver will go down short of the contact, doing his best to shield the ball with his body to prevent knockouts. This is also an important function to use when you're inside the red zone or close to the sideline, as this will give the receiver his best opportunity to catch the ball with his feet in bounds. Next up, college football has a ton of RPO plays that are very effective, and they're all pretty much run the exact same way, as you really just have to watch the defender in front of the bubble screen or whatever route that's going out into the flats. And based off of what that defender does, if the defender drops down like this, which is typically what you'll see from man coverage, you're going to want to hand it off to the running back. And if there is no defender or the defender drops back after the snap, you're going to have an easy option to throw it to the bubble screen once again on the very next play. When it comes to defending RPO, POs, the best option is to run man defense as man coverage defenders will typically drop down on things like screens and flats which are the most common when it comes to RPO plays. But if you also like to run zone coverages there are certain zone coverages that do a better job than others in matching cover threes like the three double buzz match or matching cover fours like the cover four quarters. And that's because these seam flats which you can find in matching cover three or quarter flats which are in matching cover four typically do a pretty good job of matching these routes in their area. They just have to be close enough to the receiver that their play recognition picks it up. As you'll see on this play, he's going to drop down and take that route away the exact same way as a man coverage would have. But if you notice your flat defender in these defenses isn't covering the bubble screen, there's a very simple solution to fix that as well. As oftentimes he's just too far away for his play recognition to kick in, and now you see that he's closer to this receiver, his play recognition is going to activate much faster and he's going to get all over that receiver. Now, another little known fact when it comes to defending RPO plays is that you don't actually have to be close to the receiver for the play recognition to kick in as long as you guess pass, which is going to be hitting the RB or R1 button and then up on the right stick. Doing this traditionally makes your run defense weaker, but you'll see how now that he's further away, he will react to that pass every single time. Because when you guess pass, even against RPO plays, that this technically is a pass. So you're telling the receiver, you're turning off play recognition, and you're telling the cornerback to go right after the receiver. So if you're having a hard time stopping RPO plays, try guessing pass, and you'll notice that these quarter flat defenders in every defense will do a much better job of covering these bubble screens. Next up, I'm going to go over defense, starting with some coaching adjustments. I'm not going to go over too many of these because I I already made an entire video breaking this down. I have a link in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video if you guys want to check that out. But my number one tip for coaching adjustments has to do with the new option defense read key and the option defense pitch key. Uh, the option defense read key is really just all about focusing on the quarterback, but the pitch key is worded in a way that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It makes you think that you want to put it on aggressive to focus on the actual pitch itself. But when I do that, it doesn't actually work that way. You'll see here, based off of how it's written, if I have it on aggressive, this outside guy should go after the pitch itself, but he goes right for the quarterback, making that a much less effective attempt to basically turn the ball back inside, which is what you typically want to do. So even though it's worded like this, it actually works better if you put it on conservative, where it says that it'll focus on the QB, but it really doesn't. A lot of times, this same pitch defender will go after the quarterback first to force the pitch, and then he'll go after the running back, making this a much better option for offensive plays like this. Next up, if you're having a hard time stopping the run, the best defense for this is also, once again, cover four, but not for the same reasons, as cover four is the only defense in the entire game where the safeties will drop down and play the run like linebackers, just as long as you don't guess pass. Once again, this is something that's sensitive to play recognition, so if you want the safeties to do a better job, you will have to bring them closer to the line of scrimmage to get them to react fast which can also make them more vulnerable in pass coverage as receivers can run right by them. So make sure to only do this when you're sure your opponent is going to run. 
And if you want to bring your safeties closer to the line of scrimmage, the easiest way to do that is with the new coverage cell system, which I will go over next. If you want to bring the safeties closer to the line of scrimmage, just come out in a cover zero coverage shell and they'll start 10 yards off the ball rather than the traditional 15. And if you're running a cover three or a cover four zone where the cornerbacks are typically about eight yards off the line of scrimmage, if you feel they're too far away, you can move the cornerbacks closer by coming out in a cover two zone in your coverage shells and they'll be five yards off the line of scrimmage, allowing them to play down and get in the passing lanes much faster. Next up, if you want to help out your blitz on every single play, you should be gap stacking, which is essentially taking your user, whether it's a middle linebacker or a safety or whatever position you're using, and bring them down over a defensive lineman until these little blue dots pop up above your head. These pass rush bars let you know that you're being targeted by an offensive lineman, allowing you to drop back in coverage and a lot of times let other blitzers in free because the offensive line was targeting you at the start of the play. And then last but not least, tackling is one of the bigger issues when it comes to defense, but I do have one tip for tackling that will make tackling a lot more consistent and that's spamming the a button every time you come into contact with a ball carrier and that's because tackle battles is in college football 25 and the only option that ever pops up for a tackle battle is the a on xbox or the x on playstation so get in the habit of smashing this button every single time you come into contact whether you're on offense or defense and you will often win the tackle battle immediately without any extra yardage gained so i'm gonna go to my end of the video there if you guys want to see more tips videos like this in the future please make sure to be a subscriber as i do plan on putting out more and if you want to see more tip videos that I already put out, I have them popping up on screen. So just click links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. I should out.